Good morning. morning. Welcome to First Christian Church. Uh, We would ask that you would sign your name, if you would, on the pad at the end of the pew and pass it along to others so that we may be able to know who you are and greet you properly. If you will turn to your announcements in the bulletin, the page that says, What's Happening?, There is a vacation Bible school meeting today after worship for the youth. They will be serving a pizza lunch. There are also blue volunteer shirts for $11 in the office or see Andrea. I'd like to highlight a few things. We have the responsibility of working Operation Food Basket next week, and we need a lot of help. The days open are Monday, June the 11th, Wednesday, June 13th, and Friday, June 15th. The times are from 10 to 11.45, and if you can help any of those days or all of those days, please see Carolyn Barlow. Bless you. Father's Day is June the 17th, and there's a little blurb about that. Having brought pictures of our mothers for Mother's Day, they now would like for you to bring pictures of your father. Father's Day. There are several uh, items regarding regarding the worship team, leader meetings, and member meetings, and Cane Ridge Day volunteers. Please read those and respond in kind. Thank you. I'll, I'll have to say that the pictures for the fathers are coming in a whole lot slower than the pictures for the mothers. Being a father, let's get this. Let's get on the on the stick here and get these pictures of the fathers in. Um, we're also having a children worship and wonder training the 29th and 30th here at the church. And uh, if, if you would like to be trained for children worship and wonder, it's very likely since this is going to be an area training that you may be able to attend for free um, if we get enough people registered um, from outside the church. So if you would like to do that. Let us uh, stand for our call to worship. Call to worship is in your worship bulletin. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. But there is forgiveness with you that you might be revered. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. Our hymns are printed in your worship bulletin. Let's all sing together.
Hear us, Lord, this morning as we pray, as we come and lay out our entire lives right before you, completely transparent, before you, the God who loves us without condition, the God who pours out grace upon us every single day, the God who uplifts us when we are as low as we can be, the God who walks with us, fully present to us every moment of our lives. Hear us as we pray, as we confess our sins, uh, and as we walk with you on this day. And unite our voices as we also pray the prayer taught us by Jesus, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Mine is the sun. be seated and I invite the children to come forward that are going to children worship and wonder to receive a blessing. We have a candle table, if anyone would like to light a candle in uh, memory or uh, 
uh, or well, because you're praying for them. Um, as we sing our hymn of prayer, I want you to prepare yourself to pray, not just to listen to the prayer that I will offer, but uh, prepare your hearts and souls if it takes reading the words of the hymn, uh, singing the hymn to help get you prepared, uh, or to just begin to focus on your life or the events of the world. Take that time now as we come to our time of prayer. Also, if you have a, a prayer concern, would like to have that uh, name read before us this morning, write that on a prayer note, hold that up, and our usher will receive it and bring it forward. Let us sing together.
We want to pray this morning for Sharon Patterson, who uh, is retired as a social worker at Bourbon Heights, uh, retired Thursday. No, I can't read your writing, huh? Sharon Patterson from Bourbon Heights. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I could not. Uh, um, uh, also, Sharon Leach, a worker at Ken's for 30 years, uh, uh, died this week. I remember. I remember Sharon. Uh, Katie Rosenbach of Carlisle. Uh, best friend of Megan Gonzalez for 40 years. Uh, her husband, Dan, passed away Friday of possibly a heart attack. They have a seven-year-old daughter, Addie. We pray for the Lucas Tarter, or Lucas Tarter and family of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, and Ada Taylor, in our prayers, has Parkinson's disease. Louis Stubblefield's brother, John Stubblefield, is a patient at Bourbon Community Hospital. Uh, we pray for Pat, uh, Patty and Chad Fuller. Um, Eddie Sosby had a test this week, but he's sitting here looking, looking good. Did you have a test this week? Maybe? Okay, whatever. Sorry. Um, Kenneth Smart, Chad Smart's son, will have surgery Tuesday at Children's Hospital. Um, Joyce and Jim Lavengood, Kathy Caldwell's cousin. I keep them in our prayers. Helen Parsons. Philip Jackson, uh, Judy Eads, uh, Elizabeth Barr, and uh, E. Barr, as she's called. Um, we're keeping our prayers, J.D. Hazelrig uh, and his two new adopted children, uh, Kinsley Lynn and his little boy, um, whose name was Jackson. They had to change their names when they were adopted, and, and uh, uh, he got to choose his name. His dad said, you can choose any name you want. And he came back and he said, I want to be Superman, Spider-Man, the Green Lantern. <laughs> he said, almost any name. And then he came back and said, I want to be named after my daddy. And J.D. was thinking, you know, well, this didn't work out so well. And he said, no, no. I said, I want to be J.D. Hazelrig. So um, Julian used to sit right over here uh, for uh, many, many decades, and so this is Julian, da 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 Julian Davis Hazelrig III. So, um, let us pray. Oh God, life is full, and it is good, because you pronounced it good at the end of creation. You said what you had placed here upon this earth was good and was for good, and we trust that in these days that we will be able to look at life and see its goodness as you are present with us, loving us, and teaching us how to love each other. It doesn't mean there won't be bad days, but we ask you to be with us, to guide us, direct us, to speak to us with your still, small voice when the times come that are hard to bear. We trust that your comfort is real, that the strength that you will impart to us will help us rise up and move forward, and that the hope that you offer is beyond anything that can be offered by anybody or anything else in the entire world. Let us, in faith, follow you. Choose to be your disciples. And in every way, see the Christ in others as they see the Christ in us. May we take time to love somebody today and, and do it well. For it is in the name of the risen Christ we pray. Amen.
Our message today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 4 through 13, 5, 1. When slandered, we try to conciliate. We have become and are now. Yes. Well, that's not what it is. Does it say 1 Corinthians? It's 2 Corinthians. Well, this should be a really interesting job for you. (laughs) (laughs) You can do this. (laughs) You can do it. Excuse me. 2 Corinthians. Four. Okay. Thirteen. And I have practiced that all week. <laughs> Since we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I believed and so I spoke, we too believe and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Because we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal, in the heavens and may we learn from these words very good and we uh, we knew uh, we were in good shape because we were in the hands of a consummate professional sue is for those who are our visitors um sue is an ordained disciple minister so she's able to, to switch gears uh, and turn on a dime there uh, i meant for us to um also pray for uh, the summit between our country and North Korea this week. A lot is at stake, and uh, certainly pray for everyone involved in that, um, uh, in that summit. I want you to picture a child in his mother's arms, or her mother's arms. She's stroking his hair and rocking him gently, sitting in the living room of their home. He's come through the front door of the house, wailing in embarrassment and pain. He and a couple of other neighborhood boys were out riding their bikes. The two other boys ganged up on him suddenly and told him they didn't want to be his friends anymore and ran him into the curb and he fell off of his bike and he scraped his knees and his elbow and his forehead. Emotionally, he's crushed at the other two boys in the neighborhood who he has played together with without incident now have decided he's the odd one out and don't want anything to do with him. The boy is eight years old and does not understand, and his heart and soul are severely bruised to go along with the blood dripping from his head and arm and legs. There are tiny pieces of gravel from the pavement embedded in his knees, and the clothing is torn. The boys rode away when they saw what they had done, But mom is holding her son. After she cleaned the wounds and bandaged them, he's still crying and sniffling, but he can hear her say, it's going to be okay. But she probably doesn't know that it's going to be okay, for sure. She doesn't know whether the two boys have become bullies and now hate him. She doesn't know if he will want to go back outside and get back on his bike. She doesn't know if the bike is broken and whether they can afford to replace it right now. But she continues to rock him and tell him it is going to be okay. Now what else is there to tell someone who's experienced trauma? I suppose we could say, well, 
you must have done something to deserve this. Or we could say, this may not work out for the best in the long run. Or we could say another poor choice, this must be God's will. There's something in human nature that needs to be assured when injury or insult is delivered, that things will likely get better, that the physical and emotional wounds will eventually heal, and that there is hope for tomorrow. But what do you say when it isn't a little boy with scraped knees and a bruised ego? What do you say when a life is at stake or a heartbreaking crisis has come to one that you know? What if you're Paul writing to the Corinthians? He begins his letter to the Corinthians by saying this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. He starts off his letter to the Corinthians talking about how they are afflicted and the afflictions that come to us. He knows this is something he needs to address with them. He goes on. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. That's about as bad as it gets, isn't it? With them, it was physical abuse, injustice, harassment, imprisonment, sometimes death. So how can Paul say, in the course of this letter to the Corinthians, it is going to be okay? Well, he doesn't say that in those exact words. He says, so we do not lose heart. He says, yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. In a time of terror, fear, persecution, and death, how is it possible for a follower of Christ to look at another follower of Christ and say, it is going to be okay. Maybe not in those exact words, but it is going to be okay. I always remember the minister at my grandfather's funeral. Um, and we didn't know him, and he didn't know us, and uh, I didn't know how this was going to go, but it, it at several points in the service, he said, tomorrow will be a better day. And I thought, how does he know that? Then he said it again, tomorrow will be a better day. And finally, as he began uh, right before the benediction, he said, tomorrow will be a better day. And I believed him. I wasn't quite sure why, other than that people had gone through this experience and had come out of it and had uh, done well. But here are some reflections on how we can approach someone in distress and actually be telling the truth when we say it's going to be okay. Joan Chittister, a Catholic nun and social activist, said, we come to know God in every small way that we can here on earth so that we ourselves can become more like the God we seek. She goes on to say, allow the soul to be nourished under the impulse of the Spirit. To allow the soul to be nourished under the impulse of the Spirit is to grow in wisdom 
and age and grace. It lifts us above the tumult of the world around us. It deepens our understanding of what it is to live in the sight of God. It brings us closer to seeing God face to face, heart to heart, mind to mind. Our very faith has been built by a Lord who suffered and died for us. Our very faith has been built by disciples and apostles for whom every day could be another crisis many of whom died to get the message of Christ and his kingdom to the world. So Paul is trying to tell the Corinthians that emotional and spiritual survival is dependent on an understanding that God will raise us with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. In the whole realm of the kingdom of God, God is at work in Jesus Christ to comfort, to heal, to instill hope, and finally raise us with Jesus from death to new life. An abiding hope that this is true allows us to say with depth and substance, it is going to be okay. And that means it doesn't depend on the particular earthly circumstances that we're facing. Chittister goes on to say about prayer. We do not go to prayer to coax God to create the world according to our personal designs and our fancies. We are there to learn how to live well in the life and world we have. The truth is that we must pray for the strength to do what we are meant to do. We must pray for the courage to meet the challenges of life. We must pray for the endurance it will take to go on even when nothing changes. We must pray that the Spirit of God is with us as we do what must be done whether we succeed in the process or not. And then we're to see with the eyes enlightened by the Spirit the true nature of what's happening around us. For the boy who was knocked off his bike by some other boys, his wounds will heal. Sometimes there is meanness in others. Sometimes we reconcile with those who have hurt us. Sometimes we are unable to do so. My parents were always confounded because there was a couple of guys I played with in the neighborhood when I was about eight years old. Uh, by the way, that example was not me. But, um, uh, and one of them was a bully. And some days he would pin me down on the ground and, and uh, do all the things bullies do, kind of beat on you and so forth. And I'd go in the house crying and mom would say, well, just don't play with him anymore. Well, About 4 o'clock that afternoon, we'd be out playing again, just like fast friends. But in those times, when there's nothing that um, we can do, there is a wealth of teaching for us to access in the Bible to tell us what to do. Love your enemies. Turn the other cheek. Remembering from Colossians, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. We remember who we are called to be as disciples of Jesus Christ. And there is a real comfort in being able to do those things even when we do not have the power to change the outward circumstances. Paul then writes in Romans something that's so hard to do but but, uh, gives us strength. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable 
and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In other words, don't look at the world just like any old person. Understand that you're, you're to be transformed and then your presence is to transform the world. To tell someone that it is going to be okay is to beckon them to remember that they are to live into the image of the living Christ, to seek his way, and to practice renewal of that inner nature, the soul, every day. Without, without all this substance, to say to someone it's going to be okay sometimes sounds rather trite and shallow. But if a person who is strong in the Christian faith comes to me and says, it's going to be okay, I know exactly what they mean. You will be raised with Christ. Your loved one will be raised with Christ. You are holy and beloved. You have been taught the lessons of the faith. You can rise and encounter whatever you must encounter in the world, and you will be okay. So created in the image of God, we have the resiliency and the abiding hope and the full force of love to apply to every situation and circumstance. Brennan Manning, in his book, Reflections for Ragamuffins, tells us, when we put on Christ and fully accept who we are, a healthy independence from peer pressure, from people-pleasing, human respect develops. Christ's preferences and values become our own. We reference the text which has power and effective for, effectiveness for us. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. When this becomes true, every day we can say, it's going to be okay. But when we say it from this perspective and from the knowledge of resurrection hope, uh, from the knowledge of the psalmist writing, even though I walk through the valley of sh the shadow of death, I fear no evil. And when we say it's going to be okay, we're not just uttering an empty platitude, but rather speaking through a faith which cannot be broken. And so trust me, trust me, it is, it is going to be okay. Let us pray. God of all life and hope, the light of the world, the bread of the world, the living waters, we come before you this morning to be reassured that by your presence within us, we have the power to transform bad news into better news and better news into the good news. Hear us as we pray. For it is in Christ our Lord we offer this prayer. Amen. This morning we invite you to come forward if you want to make your profession of faith and profess Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and prepare for your baptism, or if you wish to transfer your membership to this congregation or simply renew your faith. Come forward as we sing our hymn of invitation in the bulb, There is a Flower.
You may be seated. Uh, and I'd like our, the baptism class to stand up here with me, first of all. Uh, we've had a baptism class meeting for several months, and uh, it's been delightful. These are three individually unique and beautiful uh, people, and they have uh, special gifts to share and blessings to offer this church and the world, and a lot of times I keep up with that on Facebook. I see, <laughs> I see what's really happening, and uh, uh, I'm going to ask each one of them uh, uh, to make their profession of faith, and they're going to say yes, but, uh, and you'll have a chance to greet them uh, at the end of the service. Cora, let me take your hand there. I want to ask you three important questions. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength? Do you want to be his disciple? And do you believe that he's Lord of your life? God bless you in your confession of faith. Welcome to First Christian. Tyler, I'm going to ask you those same three questions. Do you love the Lord your God with your heart and soul and mind and strength? Yes. Do you want to be his disciple? Yes. And do you believe he's Lord of your life? Yes. God bless you and welcome to First Christian. Andrew. Andrew was messing with me this morning. <laughs> anyway, but he's here, so that's great. Do, uh, do you love the Lord your God with your heart and soul and mind and strength? And do you want to be his disciple? And do you believe he's Lord of your life? I need you to say it out loud. Say yes. <laughs> can you say yes? yes? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Good job. Um, Y'all can sit down. And, uh, and there are... Um, Tyler's uh, mom and dad have come, and um, Cora's mom and sister have come forward, and Christy, if, if you and Abby would stand up. Um, uh, Christy and Cora and Abby and Maddie has been coming, but Maddie's lifeguarding on Sunday, and so maybe she'll join us later. Um, Christy is a counselor at uh, Cane Ridge Elementary, and uh, for those who remember a long time ago, um, uh, Marlene Ballard was an associate here and uh, she was a classmate of mine at Lexington Seminary well this is Marlene's daughter so isn't it interesting how things how things come around so uh, I know you've already made your profession of faith and been baptized but do you love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength do you wish to continue to be his disciple and uh, do you continue to affirm that he's Lord of your life God bless you and welcome to First Christian. And Abby, uh, Abby's going to be a freshman at Bourbon County High School. It's exciting times, isn't it? So, yes. <laughs> She's on the soccer team and the Colonelettes dance team and who knows what else. But uh, we'll let everybody figure that out later. Uh, do you love the Lord your God with your heart and soul and mind and strength? And do you wish to continue to be his disciple? And you continue to know that he's Lord of your life? God bless you, and welcome to First Christian. Y'all can sit down. And Megan and Hugo? All right. Hugo uh, and Megan have been here for, gosh, how many years now? Yeah, at least a couple of years, and have jumped in and helped with everything and done whatever needs to be done. And Hugo, I just want to ask if you reaffirm that you love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, yes. and that you wish to continue to be his disciple. Yes. And that you know that he's Lord of your life. God bless you and welcome to First Christian. And Megan, the same questions. Now, do you love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Yes. And you wish to continue to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Yes. And you continue to know he's Lord of your life? Yes. God bless you and welcome to First Christian. You don't have a seat. Let's pray. God, your good and your steadfast love endures forever. And I thank you for... These, your precious children, holy and beloved, who have come forward to uh, step into that great river of faith here at First Christian, for three of them to prepare to be baptized next week, uh, and we ask that you make us a worthy congregation to walk with them, uh, and that we can walk together and share in this life and in this faith in wonderful, new, and exciting ways. Bless and keep all of these who have come today, for it is in Christ we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, now, there's too many of us to all fit in the narthex, so we're all going to stand down here this morning after church. If you'll just walk down here, 
after the benediction? Say yes. <laughs> Say yes, Andrew. <laughs> Looking at me like, I don't know about this. And, uh, and then you can come forward and greet them, and, um, and there'll be plenty of room uh, for everybody to move about. So, all right. Uh, y'all can go back and, and be seated. One of the calls when we're called to be a disciple is to, is to serve him with everything that we have, uh, all of our spiritual resources and our physical resources. Uh, we don't put all of our physical resources in the offering plate, but we do put some. And uh, this morning, this is the time to do that. If you're so moved to do so, let us give generously. Lord, you are the ultimate giver, the one who provides for us life and breath, a beating heart, and hands and feet to serve you. And so on this day, in addition to the gifts we have given, let us rise and go from this place, the end of our service, to rejoice in your presence and to love your people, for it is in the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. If you've been around me long, you know I think joy is the point of the Christian faith. I think joy is why Jesus came. Uh, he said so much in John 15, 11. He said, I came to tell you all these things so you might have joy and have it uh, completely in your life. And so we come to this table, uh, we seek the joy that he extends, and our hymn of preparation is, I Come With Joy, number 420. Let us sing.
we're by nature people who want or need recognition for things that we've done or things that we've accomplished. In the workplace, we often go to our supervisors or who's in charge and says, and say, look what we've done, look what we've, we've accomplished today. When we're children, we're in constant need of that recognition of things that we have done by our parents or, or those who take care of us. We see endless award shows on TV that too many to count where things are recognized and people receive things for their achievements. Uh, we often ourselves expect plaques and awards for things that we have done. But from this table and from the cross, Jesus says, look what I have done and look what only I could accomplish. I think that's sometimes why we struggle so much with grace because we do not have a part in it that we can claim that we did anything. We simply have to trust through faith that his sacrifice offers the way of salvation. So may we come today through these emblems and honor what only God could do and accomplish. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the supreme sacrifice for all our sin, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for us, your body broken for us, we can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Each time we take communion, may we recommit our life, our heart, our thoughts, our everything to you. Fill us this day with your powerful spirit. In your precious name, amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is for you.
You may raise your cup to honor your Lord. In like manner, Jesus took the cup after supper, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. I'd like to invite all those who joined this morning uh, to come down and stand right this way. If y'all would come forward and where's where's Andrew? There he is. <laughs> I have a hard time keeping up with you. So you're the best though, let me tell you. Let's stand for our benediction. Gracious and loving God, you've called us to be disciples, and disciples are disciplined followers of the living Christ. And so let us move from this place, and in thoughtful, planned, organized ways, let us go about loving your people. For it is in the name of the risen Christ we pray. Amen.